A 2-1 loss for the San Jose Earthquakes, but they are making progress. Comments from Matias Almeida here in midweek, as well as taking your Twitter questions. We'll have some fun. It is episode number nine of Black and Azul, and it starts next. Welcome and bienvenidos to another edition of Black Ana Soul. I'm Charles Wolin. He is Joel Soria, not to be confused with Soria FC. We'll get to that part later, but let's talk about the San Jose Earthquakes to start. Uh, you know, are they making any progress? They beat Portland and then they lose to Houston Dynamo. It was a closer game. Jackson Ewell scoring in the match. Um, there was a rain delay. It was a bit awkward. It was nil-nil at halftime. Uh, lots of things here. Yeah, a lot to unpack, as you said. It the Earthquakes are making some progress. They are. They are. Now, let's not take any merit away from the Dynamo, though. They're doing things really well this season. Four games in a row. They haven't lost a season at all. And the Quakes did get that victory against arguably the worst team in the league, right? Portland. And, and we said it all along. These next seven, well, the first seven to eight to nine games are going to be really, really tough for the Earthquakes. They got the one victory that most people thought they would be able to get which is which is good it took some pressure off the team they were able to 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 get over that that dry spell but now they got you know another cold bucket of ice i guess you can you, you can say and in, in where it still makes them internally look into the realities of the team right that they're they're still they're still far behind the the perennials the 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 big teams of this league like they did in uh, against the Houston Dynamo. But we're seeing these first halves uh, that, that seem to be okay. They seem to be, you know, have, have some sort of balance, good tempo to them. And then the second half, it, it seems to, you know, the wheels seem to slowly fall off. And that's what happened in this, in this match. Daniel Vega, uh, you know, obviously read right on the penalty, but it, it, it did hit the post. The Quakes had a penalty um, called against them. Uh, lucky enough that they didn't go down 1-0 in the first half. Um, and then Jackson popping up in the second half, uh, you know, with a, with a good response after yeah. conceding. Yeah, there's some good lapses from the Earthquakes uh, against the Houston Dynamo, and there have been good lapses from the Earthquakes against all the teams that they've played this season, but it's about continuity. And Matias Almeida spoke about that today in the press conference. You know, he wants to see those players follow his style of play for all 90 minutes. And, and you know, like we said before as well, I, I think the Earthquakes defended pretty well against Portland. And I think they did a pretty good job against the Dynamo. But Albert Ellis, I mean, he was he was something else. He was running all over Marcos Lopez. And in that first goal that he had, he he started his run from literally the Dynamo's first third all the way down, linked up with Manotas, slotted it in. By no means, I mean the, the Dynamo should have won this game. They did they did just that, deservingly. And the Earthquakes are, like you said, they're getting met, they're getting better. They're 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 taking steps at a time, but it doesn't. From the sounds of it, it looks like Matias Almeida is going to shift one or two things. Not only for this upcoming week, but to weeks to come, and specifically in, in the summertime. We'll, we'll get to that in a little bit, but he was really hinting at some major changes in, in terms of roster buildup. But let's hear what he liked and what he disliked uh, from the Houston game uh, right now. Yo creo que nosotros tenemos que seguir mejorando en la parte defensiva, en cómo queremos marcar y cómo debemos marcar, en estar realmente más concentrados. Eh, sobre todo cuando las características de los rivales eh, son buenas y donde la información ya estaba dada que se podían eh, marcar de una determinada manera, bueno, eso es constancia. No podemos hacer 45 minutos de plena concentración y después eh, olvidarnos de lo que habíamos eh, pactado. Eh, pero bueno, es un proceso y ahí va, en ese cambio. Después me gustó la reacción del equipo yendo un acero abajo que pudo empatarlo, la posesión del balón fue nuestra, eh, en tiros al arco estuvimos muy parecidos, y bueno, de a poco el equipo va, va tomando un rumbo, ¿no? Lo ideal de lo que jugamos hasta ahora fue el, el, el partido que ganamos, que digo que jugamos bien 60 minutos, 
65 minutos. Eh, y esa es la idea de tratar de seguir en esa línea. Hoy nos van a tocar tres partidos muy difíciles. Creo que el partido que viene es, eh, para mi modo de ver el fútbol, debe ser uno el uno o el dos de los equipos que mejor juegan en esta liga, que es el Kansas. Eh, muy bien dirigido y, y, y con calidad en, en toda su plantilla. Tuve posibilidades de verlo a Peter entrenar. Una vez que me fui de River, eh, fui a Orlando y, y vi varios equipos y cómo entrenaba y uno de ellos fue el de Peter y realmente es un buen entrenador, un gran entrenador. And here Matias talks about staying on for a full 90 minutes, not just 45, saying that they've been forgetting their plan a little bit, and it's just about, again, piecing it together. Continuity, uh, repetition, yep. that's what it's about. And sadly, the Earthquakes haven't had that 11 to continue that forward progress, and Matias emphasized it early on. He wanted to have his squad set from week one and continue that that same 11 up until summertime where he knew and he knows he's going to make changes. Unfortunately, the results have uh, pressured the earthquakes and have pressured El Pelado to make drastic changes, right? With the starting 11 and, and the players he wants to rotate in. And we'll talk a little bit about what he was mentioning about the youngsters, but it sounds like the youngsters are going to be ha are getting get some minutes here just in, in the next couple of weeks, but... Let's talk about some of the players. Let's talk about Marco Lopez. He, he got a red card. It was a bit reckless. He, Foolish. You know, Foolish, and, absolutely. And it, it, he looked like he didn't even, you know, know that, that, that he was going to get sent off. That That is a sending off, uh, you know, uh, going in two-footed uh, into a challenge like that. I mean, he should... Uh, no better. Obviously, he, he got his marching orders and, um, you know, he'll, he'll be sitting on the bench for a couple of games. Yeah, and him sitting on the bench, obviously, well, it should open up the, the position for Nick Lima to take over and take advantage of that, right? We've been calling for Nick Lima to play for the last couple of weeks now, and we've also been talking about Marcos Lopez having that continuity and having that that important, important, crucial experience in MLS. He hasn't flourished in the first six games. He struggled a lot, both physically and now we can tell that also mentally. You don't go in and, and, and make that challenge when there's four, five, six minutes left in the game. It's completely foolish. It's amateur. It was naive. Now he has to pay the consequences. But speaking of youngsters, and you know, we, we, we had Jackson Ewell. Jackson Ewell scored his first professional goal in MLS, uh, which, you know, hats off to him. He, he put that slotted in right into the to the bottom right corner and he's been a difference maker for these earthquakes I, I i think it was last show as well we talked about how jackson deserved a little more playing time and now from the sounds of it, it sounds like matias is ready to move forward with jackson maybe in that eight in that eight role right that he played that box to box he has some really really good uh connection with danny Husen. And he was a difference maker for sure. And another difference maker, in my opinion, was Cristian Espinosa. He's managed to, to just be a very dynamic player, a direct player. Uh, one of, obviously, the Earthquake's best offensive threats. He continued that. He was inches from scoring an absolute screamer that I think, without a doubt, would have won the goal of the week. Unfortunately, it didn't, it didn't work out. The Houston Dynamo were the better team. They ended up winning. And the Earthquakes come back, now have to take on Sporting KC, which is going to be a really, really tough, tough task. Yeah, Jackson in the box-to-box -box role, relishing the role uh, in, in the midweek press conference, uh, chatting about how he likes playing specifically in the box-to-box -box role, and he really enjoys the system. Uh, here's a guy who played at UCLA who also had 11 assists during his senior season. And, just having the chance to commentate college soccer, it's hard to yeah, have creates. that amount of assists. He creates, he creates plays. he's able to, you know, uh, you know, have quick passes and, and be able to find his teammates. And so he's an intelligent player. High exactly. IQ. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and young too. So, right. um, you know, we're going to continue to see him grow. And then also with the U.S. Uh, men's U23 squad. And like you said about Espinosa, I, I echo your comments. Uh, we talked about that last week as well. Well, here is Matias Almeida as well during his midweek press conference on what he needs and what he thinks and where he thinks his team is heading uh, further towards the future as this season continues to progress. Seguimos la búsqueda. 
seguimos la búsqueda, tengo que ver a los jóvenes. Eh, repito, si bien queremos y necesitamos ganar puntos porque pretendemos ser un equipo competitivo, también voy viendo realidades y, y nuestro proyecto es a largo plazo de verdad. Hoy está más claro que es a largo plazo de verdad. Hay jóvenes dentro del plantel que eh, dentro de muy poco los estaré poniendo otra vez, o los meteré para verlos, para ver cómo actúan. Y bueno, y con el tiempo ir armando el San José que queremos. Un San José competitivo de verdad. Eh, no, no. Hoy se va armando, hoy vamos interpretando una manera de entrenar, eh, una exigencia diferente. Eh, vamos inculcando el amor por el fútbol de verdad y bueno, va a llevar un tiempo no, no, por eso el otro día ganamos un partido y yo no, no me detengo en eso creo que lo nuestro es septiembre agosto, septiembre deberíamos ver el equipo que queremos Matias Almeida, we are still in search for a team this is not a surprising comment from what we've talked about here on this show and, and you know, journalists and things that we see on Twitter, but it's out there. He's a colorful guy and he's honest and he's upfront about how he feels. Yeah, very candid, very, like you said, very honest, right? And he said it, he said it today. He still wants to observe the team completely from top to bottom. He mentions how he wants to integrate the youngsters a little more. He wants to see how they react. Some of the youngsters that he's decided to put on the pitch this season have reacted positively. We saw that in Cade Cowell when he came on. He scored his first professional goal against Monterrey. He does that with Yule against Houston. He goes on to score his first professional goal in MLS. I mean, the youngsters are paying dividends. Gilbert Fuentes just scored an absolute screamer in, in the GA Cup. You know, you have a couple of these youngsters. Calvillo also really impressed me against yeah, Monterrey. Up sub, yeah. You have players to choose from. You you have this this deck filled with a bunch of youngsters. Why not play them? From the sounds of it as well, it sounds like, you know, they want to compete. Of course, they want to go out and win. He made it that clear as well. But they know that they're not going to be one of the best teams in the league at the moment. And, and they know that before getting there, They're going to have a, a slew of games to go through. Why not integrate the youngsters? Why not see what they have to offer against, you know, top MLS players? And maybe you go from there. And the kids are going to play. You heard it from him himself. And the fans probably want to see kids play too. I've heard it from a lot of fans around Avaya. I've heard it from some officials around Avaya as well, involved with the team. I even heard it when uh, Mexico played against Paraguay uh, at Levi Stadium, uh, just having a chat about uh, you know this team. So I think it's important to to involve youth, and uh, you know any team wants to involve youth is is going to take a a good next step as well. I think I think it's fair also to not disregard the other comments that he made though in in that response, and and those were the ones alluding to the first team and and the build of the roster, how he wants to probably dismantle it a bit in the summertime. He mentioned bringing in players, but also dishing out players. I, I haven't really heard of, of a coach. I haven't really heard of a general manager talk about reconstructing a roster midsummer, And that's what it sounds like it. Cause he, Matias Almeida has made other, obviously he's made a, a, a contingent. There's a contingent of interviews that he made over the last couple of weeks. And in one specifically, talk to sports TJ about how he wants to in the summertime make all of these changes right he wants to get rid of players and he wants to bring in actual proven players as well that are going to change the dynamics that are going to change the fate of the team and you know that that shouldn't go unnoticed and that shouldn't get talked about of course I mean What's, what's expected is for the earthquakes to make changes this summer. They're, they're not really left with yeah. many options. 
but it's it's good to pay attention to what he had to say. There. It's like we're inching towards a, a mid-season two-hour finale of some you know special yeah. Game of Thrones show that we're kind of watching. You know, we yeah. we are. It's going to continue to build. We're going to anticipate it. Everybody knows that they're going to be in the market for players. Everyone knows. Hey, who's the DP going to be? Who's this other DP going to be? Chop changes or wholesale changes can have this feeling of being super dramatic and super in your face, and you know the the fan base is is going to be wobbling a little bit and anxious and nervous, and uh, you know clearly we're going to have to see what happens with what he's alluding to. I don't know how many changes he's actually going to be able to pull off here, so we're just going to have to tighten our seatbelt a little bit more and push the trade table up. Uh, well, the Quakes take on Sporting Kansas City coming up this weekend at Avaya Stadium. But Peter Vermees, who's been in the league for 10 years uh, or so now, an MLS Cup to his name, beautiful stadium over there in Kansas City, nice soccer culture that they have going on there, had lots of praise for Matias Almeida and really kind of read the tea leaves of what we're chatting about here on this show in terms of kind of being patient and also understanding where the players' heads are at with Matias Almeida's style? You know, whenever anybody comes in new to any team in this league, I always uh, – the interesting thing is, is I think, look, they try um, – we all try to put in our ideas into our team. And it doesn't happen overnight. It, it takes time. Uh, and you can see that there's certain aspects that their coach is really – trying to have happen um and you can see some of them like there's glimpses of it some of it it's getting longer and longer um but you can tell that their players are bought into it i i can hear i hear that um and and i and i can see some of that so um you know I, i've always said they've always had a really good roster um they have a they have a good team and so this league is is really interesting like that because on any given situation anything can change really quickly with the team Peter Vermees understands what it's like to be a coach at this level, in this league. He's seen coaches come. He's seen coaches go. He's hearing stuff from the players. He's kind of in the mindset of San Jose Earthquakes players. Um, how do you analyze that clip? Well, I think Peter Vermees and Sporting Kansas City are the quintessential example of what the San Jose Earthquakes would want to be or might want to be, right, where we have this understanding that, or the narrative is that Sporting Kansas City are the, you know, low budget kind of uh, shoestrings type of club and, and that they have this, this big project, right, that they base their success on. And, and it's paid dividends, right? But uh, let's, 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 step, let's take a step back. Sporting Kansas City have elapsed, you know, what the earthquakes think they are they've played in CONCACAF Champions League time and time again they made it they were the team who made it the farthest this season and they have the infrastructure that their earthquakes don't have they spent 60 million dollars on a training facility that they share with the U.S. men's national team and they also have you know a really good scouting network they they have continu a continuity which is the most important thing in my opinion uh, Peter Vermees has been the, the longest serving coach in MLS history. That, with time, obviously has paid a lot of dividends. You don't see that very often in America, and you rarely see it in Europe as well, or in South America, in Latin America. You, you rarely see it nowadays. But, you know, there, there is a, a mutual understanding between uh, Peter Vermees and, and Matias Almeida. Almeida spoke about that as well today. He mentioned how he's talked to Peter Vermees and, and how he really, really admires what Vermees and Sporting Kansas City have been able to do over the last couple of years and how he's in awe of the playing style that they play and how you know Vermees has a complete roster. Now, let's think about it. Last year, Sporting Kansas City were pretty much, you know, the the the, the final blow, the the coup de gras to to uh the earthquakes under Mikel Stare, right? That was one of the reasons after that game he got sacked. He was sacked after that game. So it's going to be interesting to see the sporting side come back because in the last couple of years, they haven't taken their foot off the pedal. 
these two coaches clearly have studied each other. They have respect for one another. It's good to see. It should be a good game at uh, Avaya on Saturday. Quakes looking to pick up uh, another three points, looking to leave off where they were uh, from Portland and avenge the Houston Dynamo loss. Speaking of coaches, Joel, who's the coach of... Soria FC, by the way. I've just it's been kind of a burning question in I my have mind. No clue. I have no clue at all. Like Okay, you sure? Like I am just curious. Like there's no collusion. There's no collusion at whatsoever. All. At all. Okay, so I, I'm referring to a, a, a third division Mexican side that people on social media have been talking about that has been run potentially by Joel Soria himself, Soria FC, but there's absolutely no tie-in, right? But the logo is kind of familiar, Suspect. right? Suspect. Just a little familiar, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I happenstance. I, I don't know what else to say. I woke up this morning and I, I saw it on Reddit and I honestly couldn't believe it myself. <laughs> I was like, what is this? You know, like, here you have the Portivo Soria FC and it has the Earthquakes logo as as the, as their badge with a crab on it and a nice fancy golden love football crab. on the bottom like yeah I, I don't it's great <laughs> they might get promoted you never know i mean Could hopefully be. one day they do and they reach out to me and they tell me hey you know hopefully you can take over as a gm or something i'd gladly do it bring them up to liga mekis and and take over the ccl so no collusion a hundred percent exoneration correct correct Okay, just wanted to get that out of the way, folks. Yeah, let's let's clear that out. I have nothing to do with that. It's just <laughs> happenstance, and it's quite funny, actually. I made it my header on Twitter. I think I'm going to leave it there until something else better comes up, which hasn't happened ever. So. Well, I'm going to order a kit, and I'm going to get Soria number 12 on the back. I don't know why I chose. 12, how about we go? How about we go grab a kit and we put it here? Yeah, I, it'll I, go I'm with the cool show. With I mean, it's black and blue. The the crest is there. Let's do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Let's I'm, set up a GoFundMe. How about you guys uh, pitch in a couple dollars and... Nah, maybe we can do it ourselves. Eh, not bad. <laughs> not bad. Let's take a Twitter question. Our first Twitter question comes in from Ane Patel, and he writes, Who wins this year's Champions League slash Premier League, and why do you think they will win it? Who wins the Champions League? I think we can both agree on this. Barcelona. They're the clear favorite. They have Messi. Messi is is out of his mind right now. He's been out of his mind his entire career. To me, there's no better team than Barcelona at the moment. Who would I want to win the Champions League? I would go with Tottenham. I I like I like Tottenham. I, I like what they've been doing. They deserve the glory. They haven't reached it yet. Hopefully Sun and Co can get it. I love Sun by the way. Sun is good. great. I, I've I don't been watching know anyone him that doesn't like Sun, right? I've been watching him since he was with Leverkusen, and, I mean, such a phenomenal player. Can't not wait. Can't not root for Sun. He's terrific. It's sunny out there. It was sunny out there during the Champions League quarterfinal <laughs> against City. I think Barcelona is also going to win the Champions League. The reason being is because Real Madrid won it three years in a row. And so I was tired of that. They, yeah, they, they got to get rid of that. And I'm tired of the Spanish teams winning it, too. I mean, I, yeah, we can really use an English team. It hurts the heart, I think, or for Barcelona Ajax. people to, you know. But I'd love to see Ajax also win it because I like the youngsters and I want them to do well. And unfortunately, their team's probably all going to get sold in the summer. No, and they're fun to watch, apart. you know. So Ajax for me, Premier League picks. Liverpool, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Easy choice, Liverpool. Where do you think City slips up? I mean, that's a tough question. I don't know. you got to ask Guardiola about that. I don't know. I mean, his press conference was a bit eerie today, obviously. Yeah, he said he didn't the want the loser. Champions League. He just wants to continue playing a style of soccer that he's been implementing for, for some time now. You I say Liverpool. I say Liverpool. Okay. I'm I like Liverpool. My Mo Salah has had a resurgence and yeah. has been playing terrific. That Mo Salah that we saw a couple of years ago. I'd love to see Klopp lifting that. I wanted to see them do it against Real Madrid so bad, but then Gareth Bale had to have that moment. You kind of feel that it's their time to um, to, to lift a big one. So um, I'm going to say Liverpool as well. I think City's going to slip up. I think Ima they're going to drop a couple Jamie points. They're going to get weird and nervous. Jamie Carragher and, and, and Stevie G just on the on the sideline On the there. parade. Oh, At on the, the parade. parade. 
uh, at the great. parade. That'd but Liverpool great. fans, they're they're very superstitious. The most superstitious of 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 most fans. Rightfully I would so. Assume. Right? Yeah, rightfully <laughs> so. The Scousers, you yeah. know, it's just part of the part of the curse that they've had. <laughs> they haven't actually won a Premier League in modern Premier League time. They've won the. English Championship, and they've been champions of England, but they right. haven't won the Premier League in its, you know, modern stages. So that would be a, a big coup for them, big coup for uh, Jurgen Klopp as well. His first major trophy as the manager of the club uh, would would be something. Okay, let's take another Twitter question here. Um, this comes in from SF Evertonians. I think you have a really good response to this. So, is Tony Hibbert the goat? No, it's Tim Cahill. I I mean I I've been watching Everton for some time I guess ever since I was a kid Tim Cahill happens to be my favorite player and he happens to be a, a legendary Evertonian legendary toffee Tim Cahill for me I I really like Tim Cahill but I'm gonna go with Phil Jagielka uh, just oh. because of the fact that he is just this strange. Evertonian player that's in and out of the side. Why not Wayne Klopka. Baines then? I mean, but we I like Baines, but at the same time, like he's he's kind of on the downhill of this career now. I mean, so is Jack I, Yelka. Yeah, but also at the same time, I could say Seamus Coleman as well. But we could do a whole show about Everton. Uh, who knows? Let's get back to the Quakes here and take a final Twitter question here from Jeff Vikos. He writes in, you take the position of Jesse Fiorinelli. What does your three-year plan to support Matias look like uh, knowing the financial limitations of the club. Very good question, Jeff. Joel Soria. Put you on the spot there. He put me on the spot. He caught me off guard, Jeff. Uh, look, you put financial limitations, so that really limits my abilities to best equip Matias with the tools that he will need to prosper in this, situ in this theoretical situation. I would go with three difference makers, big, big names, because look, Matias Almeida, for what has been a, a five, six year coaching career, has had the tools, has had the resources, has had the manpower to overcome difficult situations. At River Plate, he had a squad that uh, posed as one of the best in Argentina. Right, and, and given the fact that he was in the second division, trying to get River back up to the first, to the top flight, with Banfield, things were a little different. Banfield was playing at a second division, but they, they weren't, they weren't the, the giants. They aren't the giant club in Argentina. They, they lack the resources. One way or another, he was able to work his magic because he had the... I actually mentioned this to him uh, just a couple of weeks ago, and he said that he had you know, the resources, he had the tools, the, the team gave him uh, that freedom to to go out and buy not expensive players, but the right players that he wanted. At Chivas, he had one of the most lucrative sides. They yep. went out to go get Alan Pulido for around 15 million from Olympiacos in Greece, and they were able to bring in other players as well. Good, good, good players like, you know, um, Brizuela was one of them as well. And then you had uh, Gallito Vasquez at the time, who was, who was a, a, a big commodity in, in the Mexican league. And now he arrives in San Jose, and he doesn't really, he doesn't have that firepower to prove himself with. So that's what I would do. I mean, it, it sounds simple, but, but it's, it's, it's not, because the Earthquakes haven't really stepped out of the comfort zone regarding designated players, you know? For the last couple of years, they've been running with Wando as one of the DP players, but his numbers are half of what the DP threshold starts at, right? 800,000. And then you have Magnus Eriksson, who's making half of 800,000, but is labeled a DP due to his uh, transfer tag. Yeah. And Vaco is literally kind of riding that line between being a DP and being a TAM player. So... I know a lot. A lot of people would probably doubt this yep. because not there's not a whole lot of uh, uh, believers on on you know designators uh, designated players. Sorry, making making the the utmost difference. But I, I would say is you, you go with three DPS. Make sure you you get each of them in that two to two point five, maybe three three million dollar um, salary region, right? But you know, 
it, it's not just three players, and and I, we can theorize about this for days. Yeah, it's it's a theoretical situation. It's a, th a theoretical question. There's a lot of intangibles. There's a lot of behind the scenes yeah. uh, work that goes on. I guess, long story short, that would be my solution. Yeah, I think my solution would be finding players that can play Matias Almeida's system that are comfortable playing Matias Almeida's uh, system as well. The Quakes haven't fully shed since Mikel Stare and uh, and from before as well. It's, this, it's still the same core group of folks uh, involved, and I think he's slowly going to usher in his uh, own group of players. He's going to need to, um, and, without you know, a doubt. Yeah, and I think you, you take a look at getting another striker, you take a look at getting another winger, you take a look at getting an attacking midfield player, you make sure that your two outside backs are kind of shor shored up, um, and, and and you have some rotation there as well, uh, as well as getting another center back. I think the one position, the two positions they're okay with are the box-to-box -box central mids and, and the two center backs uh, f f for now, excuse me, the goalkeeper for now. And, and um, is, is, is the right kind flank of, with Espinosa. Is, is okay, yeah. And, and I still think another winger would be successful. So just taking a look at each, each one of those positions and, and bringing in who he wants to see in those positions that can play his style, that can play uh, a style of, you know, pressing high and creating chances and keeping possession of the football, one-touch football if possible, and... Um, you know, doing doing his thing. So I think, again, we always say it on this show, it is going to take time. Peter Vermees said it himself. Uh, Quakes versus Sporting Kansas City coming up at Avaya Stadium this weekend. Jeff, you have, hmm, I don't know. I've said poked the bear, poked the dragon before, um, you know, may have hit the, the wasp nest on that question. So good question. Keep your questions coming. We appreciate your participation. Everyone that wrote us a Twitter question, uh, like subscribe, comment, tell a friend about Black Anasul. He is Joel Soria. I'm Charles Wolin. Thank you so much for tuning in, helping to grow the game of soccer right here. Thanks so much.